Okay, hi everyone, and thanks for clicking in to this uh, short interview with Chris and Michael from the Irish Football Association Foundation. Uh, they're funded by uh, the Community Relations Council, and many of the groups that the Community Relations Council support um, have continued to connect communities through the current crisis and have really been demonstrating resilience and creativity by quickly moving to new ways of working and using online technologies and and that's what the Irish Football Association Foundation has been doing so Michael to kick us off can you just give us a quick insight into what you guys have been doing during the crisis to keep the people that you're working with connected yeah okay so uh, internally one of the first things we did was we set up a coronavirus response group um, so all the different parts of the, the different businesses within the Irish FA group come together on a regular basis uh, every morning actually at 10 o'clock on Microsoft Teams we have a discussion about what's going on, how we can serve the community better um, and that's proved really useful because a lot of uh, what we're doing you know, comes through the communications team so we're, we're, we're constantly sort of brainstorming ideas. Some of the things that have been really popular um, have been our, we've got a coronavirus uh, page on the website which we update regularly and we've got an online uh, free online resources page on the website which we update regularly with videos and activities for community groups and kids uh, and parents and that at the moment so that's been going down really well um, what I've been doing personally is making sure that uh, all our youth football clubs and teams across the country and our amateur uh, groups um, all those secretaries of all those clubs are kept up to date with if there's any updates with regards to funding or if there's any new videos or if there's any new activities for parents to try uh, i'm emailing those guys direct so that's been very good uh, we have also been supporting uh, department for communities uh, response plan so because because of the size of uh, the rhfa group we're able to put two volunteers in each of the hub areas uh, to support the community response groups in those areas so that's been really interesting and it's sort of different from um, each council area has different demands and different needs so yeah it's been it's been really interesting um, yeah we we've also uh, had a thing called the we football chat where we've uh, used our database to go out to people we know we fall into the vulnerable category uh, and we've picked up the phone and volunteers are touching base with them uh, just to, just to keep that social interaction going uh, and that's proved uh, very uh, successful as well and then myself and some of the other guys have been out uh, visiting community groups who are delivering food uh, to vulnerable people so yesterday I was in East Belfast uh, down at the Collinswater Community Centre and uh, helped prepare some food and deliver some food to the old people's home it's right on its doorstep but the volunteers in there are doing an amazing job uh, actually preparing over a thousand meals a week and delivering them from the Newton Arch Road right the way out to Dundonald um, so that was pretty humbling experience to be honest but we brought the Irish FA uh, media guys came and did a, a video to sort of shine the spotlight on the good work the volunteers are doing there and a lot of the people involved were Northern Ireland fans so that was great to, to highlight as well but there's to be honest we've been really busy <laughs> um, and it's it's been crazy and uh, I'll, I'll let Chris sort of talk a bit more about what we're doing on the, the community relations side as well. Yeah um, yeah one of our first immediate things was just link in with the community surrounding the stadium. Um, so we've linked in with Blackstaff, GVRT and Alternatives to try and just offer support in whatever way we can in their community outreach programmes. Um, so that can be just linking in with sort of, as Michael said, links to financial support for those groups to help beyond that there. Um, giving them prizes, etc. for some of the functions that they're running, like community street bingo and stuff like that. So that was really, you know, really good, great what's going on around the stadium with the residents is really positive. Um, and we also signposted, as Michael said, a lot of people to the wee football chat for those in isolation just needing a, a chat. So that was positive. And um, we also linked in with our amalgamation of supporters clubs. So we're helping them again run uh, prizes and, and uh, for competitions for both young and old fans, just to keep the fans engaged with each other during this challenging time as well. Um, with regards to online content, I would be remiss not to highlight uh, the webinar that happened, when was that, Michael? Wednesday night, yeah? Yeah, Wednesday. Wednesday night, aye. So that was attended by over 150 clubs um, with regards to uh, funding for 
clubs, that was really positive. And from that, we're now going to start to roll out a few more webinars in a variety of different areas. Um, one I'll be running will be on community relations and the outreach we are, can offer during this time and beyond. Um, and then yesterday, I trialed uh, delivering a workshop to a group through Microsoft Teams. Um, and it worked really well. So it was a young group of teenagers who are now coming back on at 3 o'clock this afternoon to take part and participate in the full, the full workshop delivery of our new Racism Awareness and Equality course. Um, so we're trying to get on top of the online output. We're trying our best to be you know, on the ground, as Michael said, as well. So hopefully we're, we're, our breadth is covering reasonably wide in regards to community relations. Sounds great. Chris, I'm just wondering from, from some of the examples that you've given there, and Michael, maybe you'll come on board on this one later after Chris's response, but what do you think has worked particularly well for, for, for you um, that other groups might learn from? Like you mentioned the webinars, you mentioned bringing the workshops online. Yeah, I think for me, certainly the workshop online is something that was uh, seems quite, if you get the right group and get engaged, it's straightforward. You're, it's, I'm delivering the exact same content that I do deliver when I'm there in person. Um, probably something that I found challenging yesterday in the trial and that came out of the review of the webinar on Wednesday as well was the fact that uh, you generally need people on mute so there's no echo and stuff. So, um, and you can't see everybody at all times. So that human interaction level is a challenge. Um, but once you get the grips out and get a bit more comfortable with that and you do find yourself asking maybe more questions to encourage the feedback to come that little bit quicker. Uh, I think the workshops is something that has been really positively received, something that I'm going to start to roll out a lot more, not just in the current climate, but beyond this. Um, as I said to you before, Peter, uh, this is the new norm. Um, so traveling up to be at all ends of the country might just not have to happen as much anymore. And that's not to say we don't enjoy the human contact and we will keep that up. Yeah. But sometimes, just timing-wise, this could be a real good tool going forwards. Um, I also think just the, the, the human element, uh, you know, and this is not just for us, this is for everybody. You know, the wee football chat has been mentioned. There's also been personal phone calls have went out on other levels that, uh, uh, you know, they're dealing with a variety of things from, I've had issues on, maybe a, there was an issue with, a little bit of graffiti happened somewhere that uh, they wanted a phone call around it from ourselves as a governing body of football. Uh, and it was good just to call in with those people and give it the human element, ensure that everything's okay, ensure that we're working positively with them in regards to that. We can't get out on foot at the minute to engage with people, but we will engage with people both in all the positives and any negatives that still maybe creep up. Um, and finally, I think uh, it's about staying positive uh, uh, and I understand some of our co-funded groups are working in isolation as in a small group anyway. Uh, it would be silly of me not to admit that I'm blessed to have an amazing support group around me from, from Michael Down, we've got a communications team. Um, and we've been having a lot of team meetings to the point where my wife is going, how many meetings are you on? <laughs> um, but some of our team meetings have just been quizzes and just been, you know, chats. Um, and it's worked really, really well for me on a personal level, just to have that level of engagement with your co-workers as well, you know. Good job, Chris. Thanks very much. Michael, anything final you want to say on that one about um, particular practical examples that might work well for others? Yeah, so the uh, the webinar that we did was in partnership with uh, Ulster Rugby and, and Ulster GAA, and it was through our uh, Department for Communities funded uh, Sport of Life and Lifelong Learning um program so it's that went really well for me that was a real eye-opener you know through through microsoft teams we had more than 130 people uh something like 55 football clubs and then a mixture of gaa rugby and other sports involved in it and to see that work so well was fantastic and i think it was great teamwork going on because richard our grants officer was delivering the, the presentation but then there was people um you know from gaa from rugby other people from football uh, answering the questions on the chat bar and to see that flow so nicely and the teamwork behind it, it was absolutely incredible. So we're, we're definitely going to do more webinars because that worked great. And then last night uh, we had our female football leadership program 
and there was 30 women on the program. Uh, it was online and they did that via Zoom. And that was really cool as well, you know, to see how, how Zoom worked as well. So I think more online courses uh, is definitely the way forward. Uh, and it's been a real eye opener for me the last few days just to see how well that can actually work in reality. Sure, great. And look guys, thanks very much for uh, taking the time to, to talk today. Those are really useful, practical examples for for other groups really to, to learn from and have the courage to kind of try out. Um, good luck, stay safe with uh, all your work. And of course, people who are watching this can find out more about the RHFA Foundation uh, by checking out the website and by following you, of course, on social media using Twitter and Facebook, all those kind of things. So thanks very much, guys, and take it easy. Thank you, Thank you just want to say a massive thanks to the Community Relations Council for all their support. They've been fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Thanks very much, guys.